Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. Mr. Gary, there is a country music artist uh, that is very near and dear to uh, Kelly and myself. Uh, but one of his songs uh, that really uh, means a lot to me uh, is entitled, uh, When I Get Where I'm Going. Hmm. Uh, and that question, I think we've all asked ourselves that question at least once in our life. Uh, whether it be uh, we're lost and we're trying to... Um, get to where we're going or uh, maybe you're just pondering life uh, late at night as you're laying in bed and, and you'll ask yourself when I get where I'm going but maybe where am I going and for Christians that that really shouldn't be the case in that uh, because we're Christians we know where we're going to go and Jesus is very uh, evident in saying that as well uh, sure. Matthew chapter 5 uh, starting in verse 13 uh, we see uh, what Jesus says about it a little bit. Uh, starting verse 13, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Now, salt has many uses, as we know. Um, uh, as long though, or It has many uses as long as it's, uh, it has its flavor. It's flavorful. Um, a lot of times people use salt to, to cure meat, uh, to preserve it from uh, rotting. I know uh, backcountry or backcountry hunters, uh, because they're out in the middle of nowhere, like they're many right. miles from uh, a paved road, uh, they'll take bags of salt with them to keep the meat that, from the animal that they harvest preserved hmm. uh, in, so they can take it and cook it later in sure. somewhere that's, I don't know, maybe civilized. Um, but uh, also... Uh, just like how uh, salt preserves meat, uh, Jesus says that we are the salt of the earth, we being Christians. Uh, and salt, uh, I guess you can say Christians are salty uh, in that we may preserve the world from ungodliness. We may preserve the world from uh, just sin. Um, but it, he, Jesus goes a little further uh, talking in verses 14 through 16. What does he say there, Mr. Gary? He's He's still on the same idea, but maybe, you know, some people, especially today, don't get the salt idea. Yeah. Because really, when you got down to it, you were saying it does two things. It flavors and it saves mm -hmm. or preserves. Take the take kick. So, but he changed directions and used a different illustration for those of us that didn't catch on to the <laughs> yeah. first one. And he says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So there's really not a lot of difference between salt and light. Uh, light exposes things, mm -hmm. and things that, and that can be good or bad. Yeah. We get to see things that, oh my, I didn't know that beautiful flower was over there. I'm glad I turned the light on. I might have stepped on it or mm -hmm. something. Or it also exposes danger. dark, dark things. <laughs> yeah, danger. That's right. You know that kind of thing is is there. So it has it has two beautiful properties. Just like salt had two beautiful properties. One being preserving and uh, and, and the other being flavor. You know, two things. Well, here it's it, it reveals. But what does it reveal? Well, it reveals both good and bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are urged to be to be light so that we can help people to see, uh, okay, over well, here's the good and you need to get rid of the bad. You know, yeah. you need to let, let it go away. And of course, the, the closing verse is the, the one that I try to always remember, and that is, no matter what situation I'm in, no matter how mad somebody may get me or whatever, I've got to remember, wait a minute, I represent God. My deeds need to reflect that I am a child of God. Mm -hmm. And if they don't do that, then, well, frankly, I guess I'm really not the light. Yeah, I, it's funny, too, uh, that Jesus says this, because in the first century, uh, the placement of like an oil lamp uh, was very important uh, because if it was uh, a new moon or an overcast uh, night, 
you couldn't see your hand in front of your face because, mm. I mean, we did. they didn't have electricity in the first century. No street lights. No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the position of the lamp in the house was very key. That way you could literally light up the house if you placed your lamp in the right spot. Right. Uh, it talks about here, uh, nor people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Uh, so, again, that, uh, that light is through Jesus, but we can't cover that up. Um, the the light of the lamp is meant to be, uh, or is seen. It should be seen just like how you were talking about the the light of Christ should be seen by everyone that we encounter, whether that be by our deeds, the way we carry ourselves, or our actions. Um, so, thank you for uh, helping us dissect this today, Mr. Gary.